Hi everyone, Fiona here from I Respect Online and I'm here with Marianne Rom today from Social Etiquette. She's a reputation expert as well as an expert in helping young people really develop their skills online when they're in the uh, media, acting and screen and music industries in particular. But she's much more than that. I was uh, testing out some new um, equipment today and Marianne happened to come along and we thought we started having a chat and decided that what we were chatting about was something that you guys probably would be really interested in. So um, I'll let Marianne give you a little overview of what the topic is and then we've got a couple of points that we thought we'd run through with you just to uh, talk about um, a reputation matters. Yeah. Great. Well, th thanks very much for that, Fiona, and I'm really happy to be linked up with you. Um, so this just came about from a little situation that is developing here in WA and not to go into too much detail, but basically I wanted to have a chat about uh, what can happen to your personal reputation and your business reputation uh, when someone that you are connected with quite closely through, through work uh, should fall into um, some sort of criminal behavior and, and what to do uh, and how you can protect yourself and your business when that situation occurs. So Fiona and I have worked out a few points that we'd like to discuss and maybe shed some light on what, what steps that you can take to ensure you are uh, very well looked after. Yeah, and it's really important to have sort of these ideas in place because you never know when something might crop up. You, there was actually another uh, incident recently that I was aware of um, within the nursing home industry that was um, similar and obviously with that being a hot topic uh, that's another thing that you need to be very careful if you don't have some sort of plan of action in place so I'm going to share a screen here and then I'll let um, Marianne sort of or we might just sort of swap yeah we'll just points anyway we'll just but we'll see how back we go and forth. so just let me bring this up for you and hopefully we are seeing it okay are we on there Marianne? We're yep. on, yeah, we're on. Fantastic. Beautiful. Okay, so we just called it reputation and crisis management. Uh, what happens when someone you know or work with is convicted of a crime. And we are saying convicted here too because you don't want people going off their dial just because someone maybe has, you know, had their been tainted with a brush. <laughs> we yeah, want to make sure the facts. Isn't it? You know, big big difference. There is. So the first things first. Let me roll this up, and I'll let Marianne Marianne take it away. There you go. It's, absolutely. Look, when the crisis happens, the first thing is don't panic. Just stay calm. None uh, of it. <laughs> yeah, stay calm. Um, and just you know regroup and don't. When these crises happen, don't beat yourself up at the fact that you may not have recognized that there was a threat to begin with. Because often, you know, we're, we're all in business together, particularly in small business. We're all very, um, you know, we rely on each other often. Yeah. And we do, don't we? And so, you know, we'd, we may get close, but close in business is not close in personal. So... Seriously, don't beat yourself up. But there are some uh, steps that we can take to preserve our, our reputation because I know that, you know, it doesn't matter how close you get to a situation. You think, you think you're close or you're, you're not that close or you're not quite sure. But there are certain steps that every entrepreneur, every business, every young person that's just starting out, every professional and every business should take to ensure that their reputation can remain intact when these these type of crises occur. Yeah, which is so important to to recognise. What as you were saying about that, I think people often feel like, oh my goodness, I knew I knew this person or that person, and somehow or other it reflects on them. If they weren't in, uh, you know involved in the thing, then no, <laughs> we're all yeah. linked through networking to a degree. So everybody in a small community, particularly like where I live, you know. If someone does something, everybody knows about it. You can't help that. But yeah. uh, it doesn't mean that um, there isn't, A, depending on what situation is, support mechanisms for those people as well as being able to nurture each other around um, some such as you've got here. So, um, and, you know, we've, we have a, a small business community here, medium, small 
SME, whatever we want to call it. But, you know, we're very close here. Uh, we're very isolated here in WA. So, you know, people tend to know um, the businesses and the people who are in, in them. Sorry, I've got things clicking up on my screen. Like, hey. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. We're being pretty casual, guys, but, you know, it is an important... It is a, um, try to make it a little bit light because it is such a dark... Subject. It's a really dark, heavy topic, isn't it, Fiona? Like, yeah. Fiona yeah. and I had a, a little bit of a chat about this beforehand, and, you know, we're trying to make it a little bit lighthearted so that you understand that, you know, you're not to feel feel bad about not recognising these um, these issues when they do arise, you know, because that's that's life. Yeah, for sure. On into certain things. So be proactive and not reactive. You know, think think about what you're doing. Think about your business objectives. Think about your personal objectives. Think about why you're involved in the first place. And let's not try to go um, totally reactive um, because that's when you start to become unstuck. It's true. So would you... Agree with that? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, the thing is it's like even the next point sort of coming up, when is the right time to defriend and when isn't? And it really does depend on each individual circumstance. Um, if you go off the trail and just, you know, react because you've heard a rumour, you could actually cause more damage to that person's reputation or to your own without having thought through a situation. If you know the situation, in this case we were talking about a criminal act that has been proven, in that case you, you may well want to distance yourself from that, in which case you don't want to be broadcasting it and adding to the fire that's already exactly. out there. You want to be quietly stepping away and starting to do some things that can help protect you, particularly if your business is in any way related to this person or maybe you're actually working with them and I think that's the hardest part if you're actually working with them in an organization or your organization is very much embedded which you often see perhaps with non-profits and things like that they can be very embedded into other um, organizations and that kind of thing so um, and I have no idea uh, you know about any of the you know, Mary and I have, have only been talking about something very general. So um, I don't know the details of your case and you don't know the things that I was um, referring to in the nursing <laughs> home either. But uh, yeah. basically, you know, um, there's so many different aspects of where we can be connected to people that have done That's something. Right. Um, and so, yeah, so let's have a talk, um, Marianne, about this, what to do around our personal accounts that might be linked sure. to somebody. Yeah. Sure. We've got another... Maybe we've got another um, couple of points to come up on the screen there, Fiona. Yeah, we do indeed. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. So I guess really the first thing that we need to start looking at is if you feel the need to distance yourself um, and it's something that you need to think about doing quietly is that, you know, untagging photos, untagging yourself from those situations where uh, you've got those close ties with that other person or that other business it might be, you know, in networking functions or award type functions, um, any events um, that are being held. And then you might even like to delete those photos. It's not always necessary. You know, for, when, when we're in business, we have to really think about what we're doing. When we're in business, we're talking about the whole, um, you know, what we do in our everyday work lives. We don't entrench our personal lives in that business. If you happen to be caught up in that in some way, then you might have to delve a little bit deeper to see where you need to, to even uh, work a little bit harder at untagging and unfriending, defriending. But seriously, it needs to be done quietly. Yeah. You never really know what the legalities are involved. Okay? Yeah, exactly, which I think we yeah. might have that as a... Another little point here as well. A little bit down the track, but keep that in mind that there are always legalities. So when you're being proactive, you need to be proactive for yourself, not reactive in the sense that you're going to damage or interfere with any sort of a legal situation that is occurring. Absolutely. I think you need to just absolutely stand back from that issue and just look at what is affecting me or my business or whatever the interconnection is and that's all that you want to be working on you don't want to be working on you know worrying about their thing because that's you know their issue and they're, they're going to have to be dealing with that 
it's only where you're connected that you need to consider what to do. And, you know, sometimes if it, if it was something really major and, and it, particularly for yourself, if you feel so uncomfortable, it may be the best thing to do is to defriend and is to like, you know, block that person so, and say, look, don't tag me in anything anymore for a while at least. Turn it off. Yes. Turn it yes. off because that, that will give you a bit more peace of mind anyway. Um, but, you know, sometimes it, you, you just don't know what, what is in the world and what's going to happen. And, you know, it's like, you know, you might have met somebody overseas and, you know, you're standing there and they say, oh, he introduced you to someone and there you are shaking your hand and you find out later on there's some dictator or something, you know. You, at the yeah. time, if you did... Tax murderer, you know, yeah, exactly. Well, you exactly. don't know, do you? How do you so, know? So, exactly. I mean, you know, like it's, it's trying to keep, um, I think, this, um, perspective around, around the issues is really important. I know often, you know, we, we, we concern ourselves with too many other things and, and not uh, spending enough time on worrying about ourselves and our own business. So yeah. um, I think every small yeah. business owner on a whole lot of other levels would very much relate and let's to face that. It, small, small business owners, we have a lot to contend with, don't we? We, you know, we because do, we're doing all for ourselves. Yeah, so. don't worry about Joe Bloggs next door. Worry about, yes. worry about you. And, and yeah, exactly. And you know, I think I think sometimes in really close, tight, tight knit business communities, you know, we we have all have a tendency to talk and share, and uh, some sometimes you just really need to pull yourself back and say, okay, now I need to think about what's right for me. Exactly. What's right for me and what's right for my business, because what's right for me and my small business might not not necessarily be right for you. Exactly. And okay. the last point that we just got on this slide here, I it might be the second last, um, second so last. You're Googling yourself and your other party to see what's there and, and doing it incognito, it, that's really just about something that you, know, you and I would do all the time anyway for our yeah, clients. Yeah, we do, we do it. Anyway. Yeah, so yeah. I often so say, you know, do it at least once a month. Yeah. Right? And <laughs> do you want to elaborate on what, what you might be looking for? Oh, look, you know, when you just want to really see what, um, what you're putting out. So, um, and what other people might be saying about you or how you're reflected through, yeah. um, through the internet. Uh, you know, when you, when you tag photos with your name, your, your photo will inevitably appear on internet. It takes a while for it to, to appear. You know, it might take a few days. It might take a couple of weeks or a few weeks, but if you're, if your name, and you can do this strategically as well. So when you have a photo of yourself, if you type, for example, Marianne Rom, if I would like my photo to be seen somewhere, I will save my photo as Marianne Rom. Yeah. Sometimes I will also tag it Marianne Rom social etiquette. Of course, yes. Eventually down the track, that photo will appear online. Now that can also have the reverse effect. So if someone else tags you, Say, just say, but I'm very, very careful with this, but I would just say I went out for a really crazy, crazy wild night that my yes. husband didn't know about. And oh my goodness, you know, things happen. Never Some had any of those. <laughs> and they tagged Marianne Rom and I was, oh, doing this and doing that. Yeah. And, you know, that photo will, will eventually appear because my name was, my name was tagged. So eventually that photo of me is going to appear online. So, you know, it's really good to, um, to do that search and just see what's being said what, um, about you. And also you can use that the other way as well is to check to see what's being said about some other people. If you'd like to do some research, always good to do research on, you know, prospective employers, prospective clients. Competitors, if you really Competitors, want. Competitors, we just I mean, to know what's happening in the space. Let's face it, we do yeah. it all the time. And your brand There's name too. How, how is your brand name? It's how you find. Um, you know, I do this for clients all the time. I will search on a lot of the other um, search engines as well, not just Google, just because. Um, particularly, say, if they're in restaurants or whatever, you might have a Yelp or a TripAdvisor oh, where they, has, they haven't been monitoring that That's and right. you actually find maybe some negative stuff going on there. We know as small yeah. businesses, particularly when it comes to reviews, that, you know, there can be that awful feedback where, you know, one person got disgruntled and got all their friends to come and put a one-star rating on someone. Thank yeah. goodness sort of Facebook has changed the way that whole 
um, testimony, mm -hmm. you know, the testimonial ratings review thing works a bit at the moment. So it's um, they want you to say something before you, before you rather than say yeah. you're a star or and not. Look, but it can really drag you down as well, can't it? You know, when when people say those negative things about you, um, it really it really can eat at your uh, pull it tear at your heartstrings. It can pull you down. So you have to remember that you know that's only one view. That's only one person's perspective. And so, you know, you really do need to step back and take a breath and, and, and really think about it. Think about your whole situation. Is it, that just one? Is that just the one that's, you know, yeah. uh, you know, stepping out of the box? Because often we don't, we don't think about that enough. We think about that one thing and we, ugh, you know, we just let it eat us up when really it's, it's something, yes, you need to act upon. Yeah. But don't let it chew you to bits, okay? I think if you had 12 or 10 or 20 or most things yeah. were negative, that would be telling you you really need to look at what's going on. And in you your know what? Or, you're going to know that happened. before that or, even happens, before it even gets to that point. You're, you're you should gonna, have been on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. And surely your, your, friends, your friends and your family would have told you long ago about that as well. So, you know, you've got to uh, check your settings, your privacy settings. Who can tag you in post, right? We forgot that one point. And yeah. Uh, that's important. So just, you know, check those on all of your social platforms. And you make the choice. Do you want to be tagged or not? Um, yeah. I sort of prefer to be because I want to know um, if me it's too. me because um, there's a lot of people with my name. Your, your name's a little bit more unusual. So I think maybe there's not so many of you around there, but there, I think there's, you know, 40 or 50. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I don't know. I've recently gone back to using my real name. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, say, and I, well, I do. I use my, my um, birth name and you know lucas is so common and apparently yeah. so is fiona so we are putting it together and there's a lot of us out there all doing different things and no, it's uh, so true so far they're all lovely that i've found but you know you just don't you don't know though i did i saw one that was um quite a young person on, and they were in party mode and i thought well i hope that someone doesn't google and see that one and think it's me but that's the other point is to make sure that um about yourself there's lots of good stuff out there so that you know generally if people that's right me, they, they find me particularly if they put my brand with it um and the last point we've got here this refrain from being a vigilante i mean i think it's so important because especially this day and age we seem to have a lot of people almost ready you know to take up arms and banners and and march off down the street and get online and get on the radio and do all these things out loud and yeah. where are they actually sitting themselves in regard to this it's one thing to be a a mouthpiece and you know Darren Hinch you know he's someone he'll say what he thinks and he's very passionate about it mm. and he's also done jail time because of that so <laughs> and a few other politicians as well yeah so so they've got to be really really careful about what you say and how you say it and there's plenty of exactly. ways to fight for justice without breaking the law but you want to make sure you do know the full circumstances don't go mm. off because you heard a rumor do bother to go and look into it a little bit more and find yeah. out what you can that's that's true and then make your decision about how it's affecting you but just you know um getting out there and sort of you know taking on this whole vigilante kind of approach i, I think that can just end up in a really messy place for a lot oh, of people. yeah look some sometimes who was it thumper or thumper's mother said you know if you haven't got something no, not to say, say. Say nothing. Don't you know, sometimes um, that prevails because, um, you know, we should really always take that step back and look out for ourselves. We don't have to put a blanket, you know, message out to everybody saying, oh, you know, I knew this, I knew this was going to happen, or I just had that feeling. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, you know, like we all, we all have that feeling in our gut, but yeah. sometimes. Well, I think the thing is that if you obviously were around a person, say if it was a, a violent situation or something and you thought there was something wrong, I mean, I would think you'd step up and, like, report those yeah. something that, you know, would protect other people rather than come out later and say it. Yeah, and <laughs> so I, would, I would hope that, Fiona. Good, great point. But, you know, sometimes it's a headline, isn't it, especially in this You know, case. let's keep yeah. it like, in business. These days. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I know, okay. it's so hard. Just uh, mindful of moving along here a little bit too. Right. Um, so uh, business operations was so uh, we sort of talked about individual then, and this is only a brief cover for you guys to, yeah. to get a bit of an idea. But um, you know, one of the most important things, if there's an issue that's 
affecting your business in some way is not to just internalise it or gossip. It's to get the relevant people in the room. Get your mm. board members in the room if you've got a board. Get your CEO and, you know, the main people in the in the um, your workforce together so that you can come up with a, a plan um, because, you know, Marianne, I know you've got lots to say about this sort of stuff too. It's, it's so easy to go off half cock, isn't it? It is. And the, the, the thing about this is that your, your business might not be that big. Mm. You might not have a whole team of people. Mm. You might be that solopreneur, that solo operator. And so when this happens, it's, it, it's a little bit more difficult. But the, our small business community, we're all here to support each other. And now I reach out to a number of people when I have issues, like, as I've done with Fiona today. Okay, so, um, you know, surround yourself, if you're a solo operator, surround yourself with those people that you admire, that you respect, and that you can find some synergy together, because chances are that they're also feeling the same thing. And, you know, great minds think alike, so you can play off each other and gain that advice. Um, Absolutely, the next point is put in place uh, risk management is huge whether you're solo or whether you've got a team of people you need to have a plan you need to be prepared for when these things happen when the crisis uh, fronts itself and you need to be able to deal with it so those points that we mentioned beforehand if you put those into into play um you should you should be okay yeah and i love this point talking more about criminal stuff there is now under the new privacy laws even if you're a solopreneur um if if you've got your business has got a big turnover in particular you might find you're falling into the new cyber reporting laws and if there's a hack or a breach of data that you own um you know and particularly if you're in certain industries say if you're in the medical health industry and Mm. those records have been assessed in any way you need to have a plan and action where do i go and who do i go to and what am i going to do about all these things that are happening because you can actually end up getting yourself in a bit of trouble then as well if you've got no idea what you're going to do and those breaches are sadly becoming more and more absolutely and you know people are being taken to court every day now for this type of thing um social media plays a huge part in uh court proceedings yes and um you know holding you accountable now so really there's no excuse people we need to really step back take a look make sure that we're doing the right things for ourselves yeah um, yeah, just, you know, looking out for ourselves. Um, oh, this is a good one as well. You know, like sometimes we are the official spokesperson yeah. when we're a solo business operator. Um, but if you do have a team of people, make sure that they're trained up, make sure that they're full bottle. Everybody's aware that when the crisis occurs, that there is this person to yeah. go to. Right. Who's had the right training and knows how the plan works. And that can be a Absolutely. lawyer or an accountant or something. If you're on your own, you may have a, a person of trust that's yes. in your industry that if it's really hard for you to think, I can't come out and tell my customers about this thing and I feel they need to know about it, um, you can have somebody else maybe approach them. And it doesn't mean you have to come out on a Facebook Live, by the way, either. <laughs> you know, we, we are talking it now. Right. Depending on how linked something is, a personal phone call would be the best way, I think, to deal with those sort of things. Um, you know, you can do an email, but I think people get, you know, if you get an email that says, personal. oh, your data was breached, for example, you don't feel very comfortable about it. You think, oh, thanks for putting me in this great big, common email about the same yes. so um yeah, yeah. It's, i think and I'm- and stay true to yourself you know be personable um th- yes an official statement somebody needs to issue that that statement especially if you're really super entwined with this yes. um this person okay yeah um now i i know um here in WA, we do have that very tight community. So if something happens here, uh, everyone has a tendency of knowing about it. If you're really entrenched with that person, you know, you can't, you can't just wipe the slate clean. But what, what you can do for yourself is issue that statement to say that, you know, um, now Fiona's will always have, she's so much more eloquent than me and she'll have better wording, but, um, 
Yeah, because I, I just, I, I love your eloquence, Fiona. You know that. That's why. That's why I, I love it. Right. Oh, well, thank you. But I'm, but not, I'm not always that eloquent, and we're, we're quite late at night tonight doing this. Stuff. I know, it's, but, it is so yeah. late. We were fiddling around for so long trying to get well, this I'm going. I'm but... what we said before about the legal. Don't make in a statement if uh, there is, you need to make sure there's no um, blankets being put over it. If you think of um, perhaps George Pell, you know, nothing was mm, said for definitely. me and wasn't allowed to be said. So you don't want to go out and say something if you don't know what don't go half cocked so you need to get that legal advice about that and find it out as much as you can before you do that but if yeah. you're um you know we're, we're terribly involved with with a particular thing and it's and it's definitely going to have an impact then it's important to be able to do that and distance yourself and make that statement that you know um we are shocked and horrified as you are uh, you know it was actually um who's the the person who came out the best of doing something in a crisis recently was um, the Prime Minister of New Zealand. So just think oh, um, you know, wonderful. Just after, the, after the after um, the hor horrific um, mm -hmm. and things. And she immediately was on board and she was backing the right people and she was making sure she distanced the bulk of that community from this person who'd taken, you know, things into their own mm -hmm. hands in a very misguided way, obviously, and caused such a terrible, terrible tragedy. Um, and she was amazing. And and I think, you know, go and look at stuff like that. And so you get an idea about the way, way yes. to approach these kind of things because you sure as heck don't want to, you know, be misconstrued in any way. And we see that happen to politicians all the time. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Never speak about what you don't know. No. No. If you do not know the situation, the legalities, please do not speak about it. That That's the single most worst thing that you can do on social media because you will be held accountable for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Will um, and the other point that we've got just there is about the nominating someone like if if you, and, or if it was you that got yourself in some sort of terrible trouble, I know. you need to have something in place, again, in that risk assessment um, management plan that, that who's going to take over the administration of, of things to keep running the business? Or if you're in a board um, and it's somebody very important in there, um, that kind of thing, or they've got a team under them who, hang on, the chief's gone, and they're That's all running right. around going, we don't know what to do, we don't know what to do. Mm. You don't want that to happen. You need to have that plan, and in that plan was the spokesperson and also yes. is the structure of who will take over running what and who's going to, you know, be the admin on social media if that person was it um, and always making sure yeah. that they had that backup in there because if they take themselves off or get taken off, you could lose your whole page, of course, too. So exactly. And this is not even succession planning. No. That's no, okay. No. This is not, this is crisis management. Absolutely. So it could be something, um, you know, whether you've got your, you know, your investors, your clients, your staff, your volunteers, all the stakeholders, this is crisis management at its best. Okay. If someone, um, I guess the difference is if someone should be deceased, obviously you've got to have something in place for somebody to take over. But when you've got um, a, a legal situation involved. It's not always as cut and dry, but you need to have that person. You need to have your your spokesperson, and you need to have that person who can access the platforms, the accounts, and the files. Even if there's um, a file that's kept with a lawyer or an accountant that has actually got passwords and things in it, that's only for that. I know we yeah. always say don't write them down, but there are cases where you need things under lock and key that need to be accessed, of course. Uh, yeah. And another um, state came to mind then was like perhaps when someone may have been accused of a crime overseas and they may not have even done mm -hmm. it, but they're in the wrong place yes. at the wrong time. And, um, you know, you can imagine if they're running a business and they suddenly get arrested in, in a country particularly where we haven't maybe got very much negotiation, um, that that could really be detrimental for the running of that business. So Yes, especially if both businesses plan. are overseas. You yeah. know, both businesses have that overseas uh, connection as yeah. well. It's almost like, you know, guilt by association. And I think that, that that also runs true from the personal perspective that, you know, like, when we were talking about don't beating your don't beat yourself up over it if if you feel that guilt by association please don't because you know we don't we don't always 
see what's happening behind closed doors. And you didn't do it. But it's not your... You yeah, know, it's like say? you it's didn't like, do it. You, you know? didn't do it yourself. Therefore, do not hold yourself accountable for it. Don't hold your business accountable for it. Exactly. If you don't hold yourself accountable for it. You do not feel re the responsibility that you have to then go on the, um, you know, not on the attack, but almost on the defensive. Yeah, on the back foot, I was going to say. On I the back more. foot. Yeah, exactly. when you're more than you need to have said because sometimes less is more. Just to, exactly. express, just to express that a very simple statement about, you know, your shock yes. or, um, you know, <coughs> like others in the community, I'm feeling this um, and we have yet to work out, you know, if you haven't worked out stuff, be upfront about that if you have got stakeholders that matter because you need to be able to say yes. to Absolutely. them, whether it's on the phone or, you know, a private meeting, whatever you've done, you need to be able to say to them, look, this thing has happened uh, we know it's going to have some impact. We don't know the full impact yet. Um, and, you know, we're just as shocked and horrified as everybody else or whatever. But uh, these are, here's what we're trying to do in the meeting straight away. And yeah. often straight away is when you might be saying, like, we, the statement we make is that, that that person has been stood down or that person, you know, whatever it is, depending, again, on the circumstances. Yeah. Again, if it's sort of one person running something with a lot of other people involved, it's a bit harder because no one can tell them to step down, but you can certainly say our organisation is now distancing themselves from that organisation and we've frozen every action right now until we know what's happening and no more. And you don't have to go, you know, even that is almost too much to say and sometimes. Yeah, I think just keep it very, very short and sweet, very simple, you know, um, straight to the point. Don't give off any more information than you have to because you know the the legal side of things can pick up on things <laughs> i can't stress this enough i've from my personal experience having been through uh, um, a defamation case very recently a very lengthy defamation case um personally and be on behalf of a client i can honestly say that the less you say the better yeah yeah right so you just you concern yourself with your business at hand, your personal story at hand, and nothing else. The like facts this. that you know then, that are your facts. The facts. Not hearsay. <laughs> yeah. Definitely not hearsay. You know, and the rumor, it doesn't matter how well you think you know somebody in your little community, you might trust what they're saying, but until you know. And people get, you know, when you hear really traumatic things, you know, shootings and things, often that, that person is in... Um, a really strange state when they got to that point anyway so yes. it's not, you know it's not your fault you and know, you get carried it. away by the emotion of it because yeah. you know you want to you want to try to help that person and you want to try to you know um well you might be very torn and i actually always recommend and i know you do too is that if you are feeling any sort of personal really deep feelings please go to a counselor or call Absolutely. a helpline and just have a chat to Lifeline or anyone because, yeah. you know, if you're still feeling really depressed or stressed, it's really important to seek help, you know, and that's, yeah. you know, that's outside that's the a good point. information. It's outside the scope of what we do here. At the same time, we'll always tell you to go either talk to your doctor, mm. um, go to a close friend about how you're feeling, if you're feeling really affected by it, um, and, or, you know, call one of those helplines because that's what they're there for. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Great advice. Have that last little comment, and, and and Marianne and I were really discussing about how we say this one because we're saying like a number one thing for reputation repair is to get rid of the bad stuff or putting out good stuff. But timing is everything. <laughs> <laughs> how do you do? But exactly, it's so hard, isn't it? How do yeah. you do it when you've got you're faced with a situation where you know there's something just so terrible happening in in. Over there, there's something so ter terrible that you're you're involved with it, um, and you're trying to remove yourself ever so slightly or amazingly entirely from it. Yes, yeah. How do you go about doing that? It's so so difficult. Uh, but the the one thing is is that you know, for someone like me, I if if I'm if I've had that much of a relationship with um, a business over a number of years, you can't possibly go back and erase it all. Oh, of course you can't, no. You know, there, there comes a time when you have to sit back and you think, you know, like, 
I didn't, I, I saw some little signs or I didn't, or I might've seen that coming or I didn't. Um, I might've seen something, but oh my gosh, I had no idea. Uh, does that mean that you're guilty of something? No, it doesn't. It just means, you know, we're, we're all people. So um, you can't, you can't erase the past completely. What's out there is there. Uh, so when we say, you know, push down bad content and pump it out with some good stuff, what that really means is that, you know, you can't, you can't bury things, you can't hide it, but you can only continue on mm. from, from, from this point. You continue on with your, uh, your values, your value proposition, your corporate social responsibility statements, yeah. you know, your values, your vision, and your voice. Let that carry through. Uh, yeah. Don't dwell on, on what's already happened because, honestly, you can't change that. No, and, and start to, you know, give yourself a, a breather from stuff. Like you do see people get in trouble if they go and put like trying to be funny and they maybe put like a, a cartoon up trying to make light of something and it actually ends up yeah. hitting yeah. them in the face and, and being inappropriate. So, you know, depending on the circumstances, certain topics where you just, your humour is not going to be the right fix right now. It may be privately. It might be something that works for you, but certainly not not on your page. You have yeah. to be really, really careful about what you're putting out for your business. And, um, you know, down the line, if you know that there's some things that you really don't want to be out there, the way to get rid of them will be by, by continually to put really engaging content that gets lots of attention for yeah. the right reasons and that's just going to help that other stuff but it'll, it'll take time and you know you, you might always find out that you know the, there's something out there that shows you you know shaking hands or you know at an event or whatever yeah or you, or know, that, you know that hug you know that hug that might yeah. be in some photos and that's right yeah and you don't want to start second guessing stuff either that you see it it's like no oh, he ended up you know being an axe murderer and uh I remember him holding an axe when we were getting wood for the barbecue or something. You know, it's like, well, yeah, <laughs> 14 years ago, that was, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> you know, don't, don't sort of start going, oh, you know, I do think we sometimes let ourselves. Uh, our imagination runs wild. We get carried away with things, you know. Yeah, we do. Um, and I guess, you know, that might have sounded a little bit too light, but at the same time. look. No, look, that, you know, it could be a very like serious situation, Harry. Yeah, sorry. The most the most serious of situations, but you know we're not trying to make light of it. But this is a this this is a video, and we're trying to reach you, you know. So we don't want to make it all gloom and doom. But honestly, yeah. it's just it's one of those things that you you really need to look out for yourself and for your own business, and not be so concerned about with everything else. Because in cases, in some cases, oh, what happened there? We just that lost. That's all right. I thought we had one more so, point. We didn't. <laughs> So, well, actually, I do, and there's probably not a point there. <laughs> no, that's Some cases true. where we don't know, um, you know, the legal system is still running its natural course. Uh, we should not be making any comments about that. Oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> you know, we shouldn't really be making any comments about that. So, uh, and I've just lost my train of thought when it popped back to those two photos of us. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thanks, V. I was just oh, put on something. Want to, really want to slide back up? Yeah. No. Okay. No. Up. Just leave it there for a sec. That's fine. Okay. Um, so I think my point really was is that you know let's not concern ourselves too much. Um, don't get involved in the legalities of the situation because it, legalities can change. Yeah. Drop that. Right. So it could be going one way, and you might hear from somebody that it's going to be this is happening and then all of a sudden it changes and then where will you be if that happens so Look, I just think a terrible always, have, always terrible. have a plan always have a plan plan for those things you don't want to ever plan for um, right. and also and if you need any help you know um, particularly if there's a hot issue going around Look, Marianne in, in West Australia she's a girl to go to um, you know, and in fact, anywhere 
across Australia, you can contact her um, at a page um, at Social Etiquette, or and that's ED and Etiquette, not Etiquette. Etiquette, etiquette educates, yes. educates you about etiquette, and <laughs> or you can and also um, Fiona. I respect online. That's fine. Either way, um, we can help you or refer you on to somebody else that that can help you if it's a problem bigger than us. We can't give you legal advice. We can only give you Absolutely general not. advice. Um, but we can help give you a bit of a, a plan and a guideline where to start. But um, if you've got any questions about any of these sort of topics, yeah. I think it's really important that we talk about them. Um, if it's touching you too deeply, obviously we don't expect you necessarily to, you know, put a, a very blunt comment underneath this. I mean, if you do, keep it nice and respectful. But <laughs> at the yes, same please. time, it might be, if it's something at all sensitive, um, and certainly if we felt that something had a legal issue to it, we'd have to remove it anyway. So just privately message mm. our pages and somebody yes, will get back absolutely. to you about that. Yeah. So. And please also, um, you know, if, if you're concerned about your privacy settings, um, any of your privacy settings, reach out to either one of us, Fiona or myself, or any number of professionals around Australia who specialize in this. Look, it's not that difficult. Um, even for yourself, don't be afraid of looking at any of those settings. Just look for the setting button. Look for the privacy button. Yeah, and check them. Click on them, scroll down, have a read of them, uh, take to heart what they say, and then make your decision and decide what's right for you and your business, okay? But we're, we're here if you'd like to have a chat about it. Um, but, yeah, don't, don't take things to heart and just do what's right for you and your business. Yeah. yeah. Right, well, I reckon we'll wipe round that up for now, and um, hopefully you've got some value out of this. It is a it is a long chat, but we think it's actually a, a worthwhile chat to have. So we hope you've stuck by us for that. We will put up the slide points for you as well um, to go with the video, so that you have those to you know help perhaps get a discussion going in your workplace. So we'll put yeah. up links to our pages as well. So yeah, all um, that's that you can you know send us messages and that and i'd just like to take this opportunity to thank fiona fiona thank you so much uh, for coming you. on board because i didn't have my technology in place today and also i thought it was really important as um i took respect fiona a, a great deal and thought that um we could provide this information that's going to help you today. Yeah, and thanks for reaching out to me because, you know, I'm as passionate about all this stuff as you. Um, we do have a, a lot to say on it. Um, and thanks for oh, letting me... Oh, we could go for ages, couldn't we? Thanks for letting me check out this. Um, we actually had a, a really bad run with another program before. And <laughs> I was the only one you could hear, so that, that wasn't going to work. <laughs> but anyway, um, this seems to work. Hopefully the sound will be okay and uh, and you've got something from it. And Marianne, yeah. thanks for reaching out to me and doing this. Thanks, and, um, yeah, we might do another chat down the line. Look forward to it. Right. Okay. Cheerio, everyone. Cheerio, everyone. Bye-bye.